everybody, thank you for watching today. So I'm going to be showing you how to make a light up shadow box card. Now I've made shadow boxes on my channel before. I have a whole playlist. I've got six by six, five by seven. I've got ones that open up to like little mini kind of photo frames. I have ones that you can put photos in. So what I'm going to do today with the lights and everything you can do across all those sizes. So if this size isn't something you want to do, check out the playlist here and you should hopefully find a size that you prefer. This here is a slim line, so this is a DL size. So they're about four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. This one's four and one eighth by eight and a quarter because I'm in the UK. Our A4 is obviously slightly different to the letter size, so that's what I've gone with, but I'll talk through that in a moment. So basically I've made a box, I've kept it plain, you know, I'll decorate that nearer the time. But inside here you have this lovely card and then when you turn on the lights it all lights up there and it's a shadow box so can you see all the fake snow inside just moving around there and it is just wonderful you open up the card and you've got all your room to write your message I haven't sorted out the back yet and I'm, I'm still in two minds whether to do so to be honest who I'm going to give this to will not care one bit how the back looks <laughs> But it may be if you're going to sell these in future, you know, craft fairs, maybe next year, then you would maybe want to look at a way to conceal that. The battery opens from the top here. So you just open that up and you can see you can get into the batteries because I've glued it obviously on the right side. Um, yeah, I mean, it, I'll leave that up to you guys. I was going to wrap a little bit of cardstock around that, but then I thought well, you've got all that exposed. That's my, you know, like I said, I'm not going to bother, but if you do want to, then by all means do so. But yeah, there it is. So that's your DL size. So it was the size I hadn't done yet on the channel. And um, it's really super fun to make. I made this during a Facebook Live. I'll link that one below if you want to watch the whole two hours of that one. But today I'm going to condense it all down into a much shorter video. So let's get into it. Okay, so all of the stamps are from the box 12 of the Papercraft Society. So it's the Daisy May designs. But once I get to the decoration, then I will we'll see go through that a bit more this is the light so i picked up 15 for 11.99 from amazon i'll share the link of this exact one and my one's a mix of warm and white lights but you can get multicolored as well you can kind of choose what you want but i'm just going to keep one of those out now for this one the snow i've used is this here it was from hobbycraft last year but again you can pick it up it's just iridescent faux snow lots of places sell it so this time I'm going to use the wonderful bird, what do you call that? Bird bath. I haven't used it yet, so I thought I would do that one today. So I've already got all the bits and pieces ready there that I need. Okay, so to make the, we'll do the box at the very end. Because I know some of you that made this during the live, you'll be waiting for the box. So here is the DL size card. And I've already put my matte layer on the front here. This is a piece of eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. I've scored at four and one eighth. So if you're in the UK and yours is eight and a quarter wide, you want to score at four and one eighth. That's a DL size and then just fold it in half. Some of them can be a little bit longer, kind of coming more towards maybe like nine inches, but that is how I've done it today. Then I've got this piece here, which is just eight inches because it's the default height from my own paper pad. So this is using, it's a beautiful scene. I love this one. And again, I'll link that below, but it was the other half of the piece that's already in there as well. Then for the actual deconstructed shadow box, this is how we're going to make it. So I've already done two pieces. You'll want two pieces that are two and a half by eight and a quarter and along the short side there you're going to score at every half an inch so I've scored at half an inch one inch one and a half and two do that on both and you'll also want two pieces that are two and a half by four and one eighth and again along that short side score at every half inch so half an inch one inch one and a half and two you then also want to pop it along the, the longer side, so the four and one eighth, and you want to score at half an inch and at three and five eighths, but just down to the second score line. So past the first, down to the second. Again, past the first, down to the second, and that's at three and five eighths. If I just bring it up there, you can see those score lines are just down to that second score line. Okay, and we're going to cut down those in a moment. So get that for both pieces. You'll also want a piece of acetate. This is optional. You might keep yours all open and you can still have the lights, but you might not want the shake apart. This is three and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths. I've already put red tape just around 
the outer side there and I've also got this piece here which was a silver piece this time and this is four by by eight and one eighth and what I've done is on the back I just came in at a quarter of an inch on all the sides drew a line just joining them all up and then I cut that inner rectangle to give me that quarter of an inch frame that's completely optional but you can see on that one there I've done that gold frame okay so now I'm going to fold and burnish these pieces okay so with the short ones where you've done those extra score lines you're going to cut down the first and down to the second so just exactly where you've scored you now want to cut and then you're going to cut from there down to the corner or the end sorry of that third score line on this side I'm going to come up from that one just to join that one there it's just if you remove the score line as well it'll just give you a neater neater finish there we go okay so you can see we've just basically removed that section then cut across on that third section do that on both pieces and now we can stick this together so all you want to do is pop your glue on this end here so that short end if you fold over so you have one and then one with the glue facing you and then fold that one over like so and you can just lift it up and you'll get a perfect tube see there and the bottom bit where we stuck the two together is going to be the base and if you want to get in there you can use a ruler or you can pop it flat like so okay so you do that so you've got two and then with this one you're just going to add your glue all the way down and again fold those two over and then just fold that one over and now we can put this together so what you want to do is grab one of these pieces pop glue on this bottom section like so and then just pop a little bit on the triangle bit just underneath that triangular part and then grab, grab this I like to do it whilst it's on here just so you make sure you get a nice flat line straight line have that join at the bottom and you're going to pop it inside this section so you get a nice right angle that's why it's good to lay it on your actual card blank so you can make sure both pieces are nice and straight try and get a really nice join there on the corner if for some reason you've cut maybe too far or it's just looking a little bit untidy you can cover this you know you could put a nice flower on the top so you know don't worry <laughs> it's very easy to to tidy up so that's that one and then I'll work on this side here. So again, I'm just going to add glue on that bottom section and then a little glue just up in this part there. And then again, make sure I've got my fold on the bottom. I'm just going to slot that one just inside there, keeping everything nice and straight. And then with this one, you want to put your glue on both ends at the same time. So that one and that one and then this one will just square everything off for you so I can just slide that one in there and that one in there during the live I said once you've got these pieces you could do you know you might want to do some creative piece of wall art you could do all different sizes of these and have them maybe put photos in them or you could put you know some nice flowers in them all kinds of things but just make sure that you've got a nice join there then that's going to stick on there now if you're not putting lights on you can just stick that straight down you know it's entirely up to you but because I'm using this one here so first of all I'm going to test it you can test it while it's all together ah so there we go that's the this is that's the warm and that's the white light so you can see a considerable difference which is great because that's the one that I want to use for the silver so we're going to go with that one today and that was actually mentioned someone said use the white lights with the silver and the warm with the gold so I'm just going to try and find there we go now you can cut the ends of these off I actually cut two off in the live and the rest of it will still work so I'm going to do that again because I know that that was enough you might not want to wrap around as much as I have here um, you know you do get a lot 
So now if I just show you, you can trim up to the next light. Those will obviously stop working, but this all still works. So if you do want to just, you know, make them a little bit shorter, you can do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have my lights coming in from the top left hand corner. You can have them anywhere you want, but I'm going to add my Kalau glue because that took a little bit longer to dry, but it gave the card the strength and it really did secure it in place. So I'm just going to add the Kalau all the way around here. The lights will still be able to move a little bit through there, but just to get them under that, just to get them, you know, in that area. And then just line that up with the card below. Make sure all of this is, <laughs> this needs to be inside your frame. Try not to get too much glue on that. So you just want that piece coming through like so. You might want to put a hole through that, but because my card opens, I don't want holes going through here. I said I'm really not worried about the back I never look at the back of cards um, it's just not something people do you know it's going to be displayed this way so I'm happy with that okay so I've just had my glue gun warm up so I've just started to lay these kind of work you just want to kind of start bending it really to help you get it into shape but what I've been doing is just popped a very very this is what I've done on the other one put a very small amount of glue in the corner there and then with my pokey tool just push the wire up into the corner. Like I said, you're gonna kind of hide a lot of this with the snow in my case that I'm putting inside. And also when you start to stick things on, like that might go right over that corner so you wouldn't even see the glue anyway. So um, yeah, just kind of keep the glue as minimal as possible. And what I will do when I next hit that corner is rather than add more glue is I'll just put the end, the nozzle of the glue gun onto that to re-warm it up again and then just put the wire, the next lot of wire on top. So I'm not really gonna add any more glue than what I initially lay down. Put the wire as kind of taut as possible. And then I'm gonna pop, once you kind of get going with this, it will stop kind of bouncing around so much. But I'm just gonna try not to get my hands in the way too much there, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just kind of pushing that there. Once the glue's kind of warm to touch, you can squash it down as well with your finger. But if you're worried that you might burn yourself, just you can pick these up, very inexpensive. These are from the brand Stick To Anything, and I think they were $2.99. And they're little finger, silicon finger protectors. So, but now I can just push that glue down there. And just keep working your way around until you have stuck down all of the wire. So I'm gonna now, spend a few minutes getting this all stuck down. Okay, so that's the lights all done. So then I'm gonna add some hot glue onto the back of this and just pull it nice and taut down the side here. Okay, so like I said, that's as far as I'm going with the back. <laughs> okay, so now what I'm going to do is where I've got my glue kind of blobs, I've just, you can use some white acrylic paint. I think that is what I used when I made my shadow box, the huge big shadow box, which was a Christmas home decor piece. It's lovely and lots of people really enjoy making those. So I'll link that one here as well. Sorry, I've got glue strings on me. But all I'm using here is the white Nouveau and I'm just going to go over the wire. And I'm not too worried how this looks because I'm going to be dumping all of that faux snow in here. So that will also end up sticking to it. Don't go over the lights themselves because this is opaque and you don't want it to obviously, you know, stop your lights shining. So, but I'm just wanting this to look like little kind of snow drifts. And um, it's a really great effect. So it's a good way of hiding the wire if you didn't manage to, you know, feed it underneath. But also, it adds to the overall kind of feel of the card. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So I've got my acetate ready. I'm gonna just take the backing off. And now I'm gonna grab my snow. I'm just going to drop this in. I might not do as much as what I did before. Let's just try that. And just kind of let it shake around, let it stick to where that Nouveau drop was, where the Nouveau drops are. I don't know, it didn't sound right, did it? Break up, take out any chunky bits. But now I'm going to kind of let it settle without it really falling out. I 
think that's going to be enough. So just make sure you've got no dust or anything on the frame. And then you want to grab your acetate and you want to sit that. Just make sure that's really secure. But now you've got your shaker seam there. And all of that wire is hidden. All you can see are the lights. You can see? It looks really cool. There we go. Then I've got my frame and I've already put some foam adhesive on the back of this. And then very carefully lay this one over the top. And with the measurements I've given you, it will just be slightly larger than the acetate and slightly smaller than the overall frame. So you get a little bit of white on the inside and the outside. So now that's everything concealed and it looks nice and neat. So all that's left now is for me to do a decoration. So I showed you my layout, so I'm just going to speed this bit up now and get this card finished. Okay, so that's the decoration done. I love this. I'd already put glossy accents on the water there. Can you see it shining? It looks really nice. And I've put all the Nuvo drops on the berries. That was already done beforehand, but I think that looks so nice. I love it in the silver with the blue. It's a great winter card. It's not necessarily Christmassy. I have put Merry and Bright on there, but you could certainly give this to somebody, you know, in January and February. I think it would look wonderful. So that's the card finished. I didn't use the Ponsettias again, but I'll keep them. I'll pop them back in the kit and use them for another card. But now I'm going to show you how to make your box. So I've already prepared some of it here. First of all, you're going to want to cut a piece of so this is just over six and three quarters, so it's that, it's that little marker in between. You can see on my scoreboard here, it's just stopped just in between that little notch there. So it's in between the six and three quarters and the six and seven eighths. Okay, so you want the lid to be slightly bigger. And again, it's just over 11 inches. So it's that next, it's not the marker, not the score line, it's just that little notch there. So just that little, whatever on your ruler, just the next line, that's where you want to do it. The base is six and three quarters by 11. So that's bang on, the lid needs to just be one little marker bigger than this size. Both of them you're gonna score the same. So you're gonna score at one and a quarter on all four sides. So one and a quarter, one and a quarter, one and a quarter, and one and a quarter. And again, do the same for me on the lid there. With the lid piece, what you then want to do just so that people can open it easily, is I've just got a circle punch here. You could, you could cut a little square shape into it or a triangle if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna punch like a semicircle there. But you could just do a triangle, like I said, or a square shape, but you just wanna do that just on those two long sides there. Next, you want to fold and burnish the score lines. And then you just wanna do a little bit of cutting. So I'll do the base, you're gonna do them both the same. You're just gonna cut down the score line up to that first one, or the only one, like so. Gone a bit crooked there, let's just cut that straight. And then just take a wedge off of the edge, and then flip it around and do exactly the same, like so. And just do exactly the same on the lid. Okay, and then I'm gonna start with the base. You're just gonna add your glue onto one of your tabs and bring it down and under. Bring up the side there. Make sure again, you've got a nice right angle. Try not to pull it in too far. Just make sure it lines up perfectly there. So if you come in, if you pull it in too much, then that's gonna affect the overall size. So again, just line it nice and straight. And again, the same at this end, and you're going to do exactly the same on the lid. Okay, and then just kind of pinch in the sides there so they don't bow out. But now that should fit perfectly on the top, and it's easy for that person to be able to pull it open. So now I'll leave the lights on for the minute, but that will fit in perfectly. I've given you plenty of room, so if you've got dimension, maybe some flowers on them and things like that, you have the room for it because it's about one and a quarter high 
how lovely is that you could wrap some ribbon around it you could put a gift card in there as well and it's a great size gift box on its own so I might actually just do this as a separate tutorial as a gift box but also a DL kind of envelope box but uh, yeah I think it's turned out brilliantly so there's that one bring this one back over again so I love now that I have that warm gold style along with the winter white lights there as well so let me know which one's your favorite i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial i'll link everything as always in the video description below popping up now will be more shadow box tutorials so i'll put the five by seven and the six by six so again you can take all of these kind of ideas and you can put them into those size and um, shadow boxes really easily so thanks for watching and i'll see you again soon bye, -bye.